If you ever feel like your hands are getting shaky, your heart's beating really hard, and you're not able to focus when you're clutching or doing some high score running Kovax, or all your friends are spectating you or really anything, I'm going to fix that issue for you with this video. A lot of the advice out there right now is just to play more, and while this is helpful, there's a lot more things you can do to stay calm, and even strategies you can use right after watching this video to have immediate effects on your gameplay. Last week I did mention how some stress can be helpful for learning aim and like practicing, but if you're so stressed that you can't focus or you can't play, then you cannot reap this benefit and you need to be able to control your stress. And if you're trying to perform at the best of your ability, you want to be as focused as possible, which means that you don't want to be that stressed and you also don't want to be shaking with like your heart beating intensely, you want to be able to focus. Regardless of why you're trying to calm down and reduce stress, there's a few simple strategies you can immediately use in your next clutch. The first is just to lower your heart rate, but it's actually way easier to do than you'd think. Now, if you've lived as a human for a bit, you may have noticed that you have no direct conscious control over your heart rate. You can move your fingers whenever you want, but you can't consciously raise or lower your heart rate as easily. However, you do have the option to directly control your breathing. Obviously, you don't have to think about breathing, but if you want to, you can, and you can consciously control it. Chances are, just from me saying this, you're currently consciously controlling your breath as we speak. Now, most people understand that when you're trying to inhale, all you're actually doing is just flexing a muscle called the diaphragm, and when you flex your diaphragm, it flattens out, creating a vacuum in your chest, filling your lungs with air to fill the space. What most people don't realize is that your heart also expands when you inhale. When your heart expands, it's less effective, and your brain has to send signals to increase your heartbeat to compensate. Exhale, and the opposite is true. Now, normally these will balance out and your heart rate will stay pretty constant, but you can actually manipulate this process by either inhaling or exhaling for longer or more vigorously. So a long relaxing inhale, which you can control very easily, will allow you to lower your heart rate assuming that your inhales are shorter but not so vigorous that it feels like you're hyperventilating. Now this alone will reduce your stress to a point where you'll be better able to focus, better able to high score, clutch, and most importantly, you will be able to guide your mouse to the red subscribe button and click it. But wait, there's more. Your breathing can be manipulated even further through a breathing technique known as the physiological sigh. Now, from that name, it sounds like it'd be pretty complicated, but it's literally just a double inhale through your nose and then you exhale through your mouth. The whole function of the double inhale is basically just to prepare your lungs to allow more oxygen into the bloodstream and let out more carbon dioxide. This is super easy to do, pretty relaxing, and scientifically, it seems to be the greatest stress reduction method we know of. Obviously, in this technique, your exhale should be longer than the two inhales, but not so long that it goes from relaxing to uncomfortable, and the two inhales should be short. However, this is not the only stress reduction technique that I've found. The act of just consciously relaxing your face muscles has been shown to have stress reduction benefits. Basically, just be aware of the muscles in your jaw and your face, and if they're tense, just force them to be more relaxed. From my understanding, this has something to do with how the brain is wired and how the face muscles connect to the brainstem, but if I completely understood this at a cellular level, I wouldn't be the guy on YouTube making aim training videos, I'd be like a neurologist at a university or something. Another quick method would be to broaden your field of view to include more things like the wall and the room around your monitor as this can help with acute stress, but very rarely are you both stressed in game and able to look away from your monitor, so this method isn't really very useful unless you're very dialed in and about to start a new 1 while 4 target small voltaic runner in between rounds just trying to dial in before the next round or something. Now before I can get into some strategies you can use to prepare yourself before you face this kind of stress, I just want to make it clear that some amount of manageable stress is helpful for focus, so these methods shouldn't be used to increase focus, but rather to decrease alertness. If you want a better explanation of what I mean by this, feel free to check out last week's video in the top right. So regardless of how good you get at reducing stress, it is biologically unavoidable at certain times, and eventually the pressure could make you nervous and the 
methods above aren't enough to calm you down. This is fine as this is a scenario you can actually train for. Obviously the traditional thought is just get yourself into more clutch situations by playing more, but there's actually other ways you can do this. Now what you have to understand is that stress in this context is just the presence of adrenaline in your body and your brain, and when it's in your brain it's referred to as epinephrine. There's also this slightly different hormone that's called noradrenaline, or if it's in your brain, norepinephrine, but it is so insignificantly different in this context that the separation doesn't matter for this video. What you have to understand is that learning to keep calm when these are present is doable and it's important. Now, a lot of people will say that stress is bad for you and it's bad for your health and your immune system. According to my research, this isn't completely true. Obviously, please talk to a licensed doctor if you're going to do anything. I'm a YouTuber and a gamer. I'm not a medical professional and you are responsible for your health. But my research suggests that short-term acute stress is helpful for your immune system. It will heighten it and long-term stress is where all the issues that are associated with stress in general tend to come from. But creating stress intentionally and forcing your mind to remain calm can help you be prepared when the stress comes on unintentionally and you need to stay calm. For the sake of this video, unintentional stress is a clutch or a Kovacs high score run or something. So how can you do this intentional stress? My favorite method is to take a cold shower and try and remain mentally calm while also trying to stay physically calm. What cold means is very subjective to your circumstances and who you are. If you're like me, then like 50 or 60 degrees isn't enough to send shivers down your spine and make you kind of uncomfortable, which is all you need to feel. But maybe it's a hot day out, you live in the middle of Florida, and you get in the shower and you put it as cold as you can, and it just feels really good no matter what, and in that case, it probably won't work as a method for you that day. This will work pretty much the same way as an ice bath, but it's a lot harder to gain access to one of those if you're like 99% of people. And if the water is dangerously cold, don't expose yourself to it. Don't put your health at risk. Talk to a licensed doctor before you change any of the protocols in your day-to-day -day life so that you don't injure yourself. And this cold shower method kind of has a double function because if you take a cold shower immediately before or immediately after your aim training session, the increase in epinephrine and norepinephrine levels will help you learn aim faster and actually it'll help you learn pretty much anything faster. Another method is just to force yourself to stay calm during intense exercise. For about six years, I competed as a distance runner in high school and middle school cross country and track. I wasn't great for reference. My mile was around 507. My 5k was 1820. And during these races, I felt what I now know to be intense levels of epinephrine and adrenaline. And I really just had to force myself to stay calm. I was a runner long before I was a gamer, and as a result, I was able to learn to be calm in clutch situations very quickly compared to some people I know. Like the cold showers, science seems to be suggesting that aerobic exercise can help you improve motor learning if you do it immediately before or immediately after your aim training, so if you want to try that, feel free to do so. Now, if you want to be able to harness either of these methods, when you start to feel stressed, just focus on staying calm and clear-headed and not shaking and not letting your heart rate go up that much. This will make you much more able to handle this stress in a clutch situation. Another way to release more adrenaline into your bloodstream is just to begin rapidly breathing and forcefully, intentionally hyperventilating. This is usually called Wim Hof breathing, named after the man who is most famous for the technique. If you want to know more about some of the benefits of increasing epinephrine levels, as well as some other ways to help improve your aim faster, check out last week's video. If you want more aim advice, subscribe. And if you want any of my sources, feel free to check out episode 10 of the Huberman Lab podcast, a podcast made by Dr. Andrew Huberman, a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford University. Thanks for watching.